So today we'll look at the chapter 3 which is correlation and regression. Okay, so firstly, let's look at the definition of what is the correlation analysis, right? So in correlation analysis, it's actually the statistical method to measure the strength. So we want to measure the strength to, between, of the relationship between two variables. If we have variable x and variable y, so how strong these two variables are related? So we, we do that by using the correlation analysis. However, the regression is actually the statistical technique to obtain the equation. So we want to obtain the equations that relate the two variables. So just now we, we, we get the relationship between the two variables using the correlation and then to build the the equations which relate the two variables and then we'll use the regression. So today I'll focus on the re correlation uh, correlation part first. Okay, so firstly, um, if we have this, uh, the plot of x axis and y axis, so usually the x axis have the uh, independent variable, independent variable, while on the y axis we have the dependent variable. Okay, let's look at uh, some examples, meaning that this y depends, it is actually dependent, so it depends on this one, alright, it depends on that one. Okay, so there here are some examples, be, uh, how to compare between the dependent and also independent variables. Like say you have total sales, in a company you have the total sales, so it is actually independent variable. So what is the variable that depends on that total sales? Actually the profit. So. The profit will become dependent because the profit depend on the total sales, something like that. Okay, same goes to if you have phone bills, right? So actually the independent variable is actually call usage, how many messages you send. So all of them are the dependent. So the, uh, sorry, independent. So the dependent variable will be the phone bills because the phone bills depend on this call usage. Okay, same, same goes to the monthly expenses and income. If you have some amount, some amount of income and then you, you know, you'll have the... Uh, monthly expenses as the dependent variable why because uh, you want to expand uh, on you want to you know spend on how much money every month so it depends on the income that you gain all right so it's something like this uh, so if you have the independent variables also all these will be on the x axis while the dependent variable will be on the y axis all right so let's look at this scatter diagram or scatter plot okay if we have uh, like this, all right, the first one. So if we have the perfect, you know, the plot, which is very perfect, making a, a, a straight line, which is slanting to the right. So this one will be called as the perfect, perfect um, positive because it is slanting to the right. All right, slanting to the right like this. So perfect positive, uh, perfect positive a relation or correlation, okay, between the X and Y. While the second one will be because it is, you know, very perfect making a straight line. So it will be become, it will become perfect negative. Why it is negative? Because it is slanting to the left. Something like this. Okay. So neg uh, negative correlation. Okay. Correlation. Okay. If you have something like this, which is scattered, why, uh, you know, randomly scattered. So it is actually, we can see that there is no relationship. All right, no a relationship, meaning that you can't say you cannot say it is positive, it is negative. All right, if we have something like this, so we'll have uh, something like this. Usually, we'll have it is not perfect, but it will be positive linear correlation. Linear correlation. Okay, why it is positive because it is slanting to the right, something like this. While this one will be the negative linear correlation. Okay. Why it is negative? Because it is slanting to the left like this. Okay, so here are some types of the scatter diagram. So now we'll look at the examples of plotting the scatter plot. Let's now look at the scatter plot. So how to plot this? All right, given the set of data. All right, so we'll have to build the x axis and y axis. So you have to, you know, you have to know how to the plot the, the axis first, and then you put all the values on the axis, and then we can start plotting this. All right, so. Let's say I use the red color, so, so that it make it make it more obvious. So, uh, you have the first one is one zero, so one zero is somewhere around here, all right? The first one, and then we have the three five, so three five is somewhere around here, and you have five eleven, five and eleven, eleven is somewhere around, I guess around here, okay? Five eleven. All right, next one we have seven fourteen, all right? So you have seven, seven is there, seven fourteen, so thirteen is before fifteen, so it's somewhere around here, okay? Seven fourteen, then you have nine nineteen, so nine and also nineteen, nineteen is before twenty, is it there, all right? And then you'll have 13, 22, okay? You have 13, uh, 13, and 22. 20 and 22 is somewhere around here, I guess, all right? 13, 22. And then you have 17, uh, 17, 30, right? 17, 30, so 17 is there. 
Click in there, okay? I guess I'm around there. Okay, so you have something like this. So what can you say? So you look at this plot, you know, it's making a positive uh, linear correlation, right? Between the X and Y values, right? So let's look at the second example. Right. You have the... Okay. Firstly, you have to build the, you have the set of data, all right? So you have to build the X axis and Y axis. Right now, let's try to plot this. So you have the first one is uh, 310, okay? 310 will be here. And then you have 420. 420 is somewhere around here. And you have 63. 63. 3 should be somewhere around around here, I guess. Yes. Okay, 63. And then you have 87. 87, you'll have somewhere around, around there, okay? 87. Uh, and then you have 11, 14, so 11, sorry, 11, 4, so 11, 4, somewhere around there. And then you have 17, 1, 17 and 1, 17 and 1 will be somewhere around there. Uh, 18, 12, so 18, 12, 18 and 12 is somewhere around there. And then you have 22 and 5, 22 and 5 is there, alright? So look at this plot, this scatter plot, so... You know, you, you can't make any relation. You can't say it is positive. You can't say it's either it's a negative. So it is neither positive nor negative. So it is actually no relation between the X and Y. Okay, for this set of data. Right, let's try the third one. All right. You have the set of data. Okay. The body X and Y. All right. So make it bigger. So you have the first one is 56. So I'll go to 50 and 6. So 50, 50 and 6 will be somewhere around here. Okay. And then we'll have 46 and 10. Okay, 46. 46 and 10, okay, I guess I'm around there. All right, next one, you have 38, okay, 38, 17, all right, so 38, 17, okay, 35 is there, 38 is somewhere around here, 38, 17, all right, 38, 17 is somewhere around there, okay. Next one will be 30, 19, 30, 19, uh, 30, 19, 30 is on X and 19 on the Y, so 13, 30, 19 is somewhere around here, and then you'll have 26, 24, 26, 24, 26, 24 is somewhere around there, okay? And then you'll have 20, 30. 20, 30 is here. And then you'll have 14, 35. 14, 35. 14, 14 is, okay? 14 is there. 35, okay? I guess I'm around there. So, if you look at these plots, it is actually making the negative linear correlation between the X and Y because it is slanting to the left, okay? Okay, the next part is that we want to calculate the... Uh, we want to make a relation between the two variables, x and y. So, it can be made using the Pearson's product moment correlation coefficient, which is labeled by R. So, given by this formula. So, in ASM is given, the formula is given. So, but you have to know what is R, what is N, what is sum of summation of x, y, summation of x, summation of x square, and so on. Right, so in this formula, so R is actually... So, this R, okay, this R which is the R is the coefficient, or correlation coefficient, all right? So, whereby N is actually N here, all right? N, there are three Ns there. So, it's actually the number of observations, meaning that how many data set you have in, in your initial question. And then, uh, you have summation of XY, meaning that you have to multiply X and Y, and then you sum, sum them. You, you, you make a total of them, all right? So, that one is the meaning of summation of the product of X and Y. And then you have the summation of X square, meaning that you have to take square on all X. So, we'll get summation of X square. The same goes to summation of y square. So you have to, to take y square. Uh, you know, you have to take square on, on all y's and then you take the summation. However, the summation of x uh, at the outside, you have square, meaning that you have to take summation first and then you have to square the summation. All right. So it will become this one. All right. So before we go further, you should look at the uh, R. It, it, sh it will be labeled by two uh, important uh, indicators here. The first one is the sign. If it is positive, meaning that it is, you know, slanting to the right, something like this. While it is negative, so it's slanting to the left. Uh, the positive means that if X increases, all right, meaning that is if X increases, if X increases, then the Y will increase also but if you have negative means negative relation means that you have if x increases well you know it becomes vice versa so x or y will decreases okay y will decreases okay well the magnitude the value of r uh, represents the strength how strong is the relation between x and y okay so uh, if we, we have certain some cases here right if we have r is equal to one you have r is equal to one so we call this as the relation is perfect why is it perfect? Because the value is 1 and it is positive. Why? Because it is uh, positive 1. All right. If it, the value is between 0 0.8 and 1, so it will become strong positive. All right. Strong positive. Okay. Strong positive relationship, I mean. All right. If you have the value of R is between 0 0.5 and 0 0.8, so it will become moderate. All right. Moderate. Which is not so strong, not so weak. All right. 
positive. And then you have R is between 0 and 0 0.5, so you have the weak positive relationship. Okay, this one is weak positive relationship. If R is 0, meaning that there is no relationship, so you cannot find any relationship, which is randomly scattered as shown in the previous figures just now. All right, if R is between negative 0 0.5 and 0, so it means that it has a weak negative relationship. Why negative? Because you have negative values on the R. Okay, and then if you have R is between negative 0 0.8 and negative 0 0.5, so it will become moderate negative, all right? Moderate negative relationship, moderate negative. Okay, and then you have R is between negative 1 and negative 0 0.8, so it's actually a strong negative relationship, strong negative relationship. And if, it are, uh, if R is equal to negative 1, meaning that it is actually the perfect, okay, it's actually perfect negative relationship. Okay, making a, you know, perfect straight line there. Okay, something like this. Alright, so la let's now look at this example 3.3. .3, okay, okay. now if we are given the age and the selling price, meaning that the selling price is the dependent, which is depends on the age. Alright, mm, age of the product, X, okay. Uh, we're given by this set of data. So firstly, when you get this type of data, you have to count how many data set are you, uh, how many observations are there. So you'll have one. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So n is equal to 8. So directly write the n is equal to 8. So after that, you know, uh, you have to build this table, right? You have to build this table. You have the, you know, you have, uh, given the data maybe horizontally, but you have to uh, rebuild the table vertically, something like this. If the table must have the x, the y, all right? So you fill up with the values given by the question. All right, and next, you have to find the, after you get x, you get to get the x square, all right? So... Uh, the x square, um, so like for example, the first one, you'll have 7 square, 49, 10 square, 100, 8 square, 64, 8 squared again, 64, and then 9 square, 81, and then uh, 12 square, 144, and then you'll have 5 square, 25, and 9 square is 81 again, all right? And the next one is that you have to take the y square, meaning that you have to take square on the y values, all right? So you have to take square on the 15, you get 225, and then you have to take square on the 13, you get 169, and then 15 again, so you get 225, 14, you get 196, and then 12, uh, 11, you get 1 to 1, 9, you get 18 1, and then 18, you get 3 to 4, okay? So 13, you get 1, 9, 6, uh, sorry, 1, 6, 9, right? What is x, y? Meaning that you have to multiply the x and the y value, multiply that one, so you multiply these two, okay? So you get 7 multiplied by one, 15, you get 105, and then uh, 10 multiplied by 13, you get 130, all right? And then you proceed until you get 120, 8 multiplied by 14, you get 112, and then 9 multiplied by 11, you get 99, and then you have the 12 multiplied by 9, you get 108, and then you have 5 multiplied by 18, you get 90. And the last one, 9 multiplied by 13, you get 117. Okay. After you finish, up, uh, finish filling up the table, so you have to take the total for each column. Right. The total of x, summation of x, meaning that you have to find the value, the sum, uh, you have to add each value, 7 plus 10 plus 8 plus 8 plus 9 plus 12 plus 5 plus 9. And then you have to press your calculator and you get 68. All right. 68. What is that? That one is actually summation of x. Okay. Same goes to y. You have to take the total of y, so you, you actually get 108. Okay. 108. Okay. So summation of y. That one, next one is x square. So you have to take the summation of that one. So you get 608. So that one is actually the summation of the x square. Okay. So the next one is like some summation of y square is actually 1510. So that one is actually summation of y square. So the summation of x, y, meaning that you have to multiply x, y, and then you add them up. So you'll get 881. So that one is actually summation of x, y. So this one is given. Uh, this one is, is obtained from the table. And then you'll have to insert into the formula of the correlation coefficient, which is the Pearson's product common correlation coefficient. So in, in short, we call it as correlation coefficient. So the formula is given by this. All right. So firstly, write the formula. Right. So what is summation of x, y? So the first one, let me highlight that one. So we want to write this one, summation of x, y. So let's find summation of x, y from your uh, table. So this one. Okay. So it's actually 881. So you'll fill with 881 there. And then you have to minus summation of x. So summation of x. Okay. I'm talking about the summation of x. So it's actually here. Okay. 68. So of course you'll fill with 68. And then you'll have to multiply with the summation of y. Multiply with summation of y. So summation of y is given by this 108. So you'll fill up with... Uh, 108 okay divide with n n is the number of observations that you have marked just now which is six, uh, n is equal to 8 so di divided by 8 all right so you have to uh, uh, divide with the square root of the whole thing there which is summation okay the next one is that we want to fill with the summation of x square so look at your table so summation of x square is actually 608 all right so that one is 608 608 
Okay, you should uh, subtract the summation of x. Take the summation of x. Where's the summation of x? It's actually 68. So you have to take the 68, but you have the square there. So 68 square over n, n is 8. Okay, so the same goes to summation of y square. Summation of y square, you look at this, so it's actually here 1510. So you'll fill with 1510. You have to subtract the summation of y. Okay, look at the summation of y here. So summation of y is given by this. 108 so you'll have 108 but you have the square so you have to take square divided by n n is the number of observation which is 8 so having all these values you have to press calculator but be careful when pressing your calculator don't make silly mistakes so you'll get negative 0 0.9368 so these values is actually you know these values is actually approaching this approaching negative 1 but it's not equal negative 1 so it is not perfect but it is very strong is it okay so it is strong because it is approaching negative 1 but it is because it is negative there so it's strong and negative relationship negative relationship okay negative relationship between what between the x x is actually the age age of a product maybe so between the the age of the product so which is leveled by x uh, and okay and the selling price and the selling price of the product okay selling price which is why so what can we say that uh, it's something like uh, you have uh, the plot it's something something like going down like this meaning that as okay something like this because it is strong negative relationship so as x increases so the value of, of y this is y this is x as x is increasing so the value of y is decreasing decreasing and decreasing something like this okay